Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Melpass, and pleased to be here with Jamie Burke, CEO of Outlier Ventures, by the way, the Web3's leading accelerator by volume, to talk about where we're at with the economy. And some experts say we're in a crypto winter. What's a crypto winter? How do you know if we're in it? What do you think is happening? Yeah, so, I mean, when we're talking about a winter in terms of a technology cycle, mm -hmm. uh, the, the origins of that originally came from AVA, uh, AI in the 80s. Um, and it was this kind of like downward cycle where firstly there's kind of negative sentiment within the community that would lead to um, a lack of funding, bad press, mm. and then of course um, a lack of R&D and that would last for decades. Right. Um, now we had something similar to that in 2018 to 20 in, in crypto. I think objectively you could say that was a crypto winter um, where all of those things were true. Um, and I think the question is now, are we seeing another form of crypto winter? And I would argue no, and I guess we can kind of get into why. Okay. And so why do you say it's a no? Why isn't it? Well, so um, if we look at R&D to start with, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the difference between, say, AI and Web3 or crypto, depending on um, how you want to call it, um, is that we've already broken out of the R&D phase. We've really been looking at um, at least several years of commercialization, the application of this technology um, to different commercial industries. Um, and that's, that's continued, right? So um, we're at our accelerator, we've had 2000, over 2,000 startups apply in the last uh, two quarters this year. Terrific. Which is higher than ever. Right. Um, and similarly, even if you go into the R&D phase of it, um, there is still a huge amount of money being deployed in infrastructure and kind of foundational primitives. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of the leading protocols out there, kind of the top 10 protocols that people are building on, um, the level of kind of code commits that you're seeing on things like GitHub, both by the core teams and the wider community, um, are still either sustained or growing. So in terms of the technology and its application, um, you know, we're still seeing a huge amount of activity there. So that's encouraging. So what did we learn from the 2018 crypto winter? Yeah, well, so what happens in uh, these technology cycles in the context of crypto are usually two things. The first thing is that there's some kind of foundational primitive where a, a new form of digital value is created. Um, and that value allows for uh, money to be kind of recycled within the system. Mm -hmm. um, that usually leads to an appreciation of price of assets, publicly listed assets. Um, and that sucks in money from somewhere, new sure. money from somewhere. That could be retail, it could be institutional. Um, and so uh, that was ICOs, initial coin offerings in 17. Mm -hmm. In 2020, it was DeFi. Um, and then more recently, it was NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Right. So uh, you, f you first need some kind of new innovation to trigger um, this period of value creation. Um, but as I said, secondly, you then need some new money to kind of enter the system. Right. Um, obviously, the macro environment's been very favorable to crypto and Web3 with kind of quantitative easing, you know, free money coming through COVID um, that's been put to work uh, in the markets. We saw, of course, in classic stock, you know, most tech stocks pumping. Um, that was also true for crypto and Web3. Of course, that money's now evaporated in right. the wider macro sense. Um, and so we're seeing significant depreciation in listed assets. Mm. Um, so the kind of question is, you know, where, where is this new money going to come from? Yes, and where are we headed right. long term? Right, because right. if you look at the uh, listed assets, which only really uh, say part of the picture around lack of financing. So another criteria for a winter, a technology winter, is that all funding dries up. Um, but funding comes in, in crudely in two forms. One is the secondary market that I just mm -hmm. mentioned, retail or institutional money, uh, hedge funds. Um, or the primary market, which is where we operate, which is venture capital. Mm -hmm. um, and actually in venture capital, we're seeing record levels of capital both allocated to Web3. So $15 billion has been allocated in the last two quarters of 2022. That's impressive. Um, that's up from $12 billion, uh, same period, 21. Mm -hmm. um, and that, meant that is money that has to be deployed into Web3. Mm -hmm. You know, the GPs uh, don't get paid, they don't get their, their management fee, they don't get their carry unless they deploy that. Um, so that is money that's committed to the space. What we're seeing through our accelerator is that um, that is still being deployed. It's slowed down a little bit, okay. um, uh, largely because it's just not so easy to spin up a, a digital asset anymore and it just 
to be successful because the wider market's being successful, um, you really have to start investing on fundamentals. Mm. And so as a consequence, um, VC funds are now actually having to do due diligence. That's constrained by human capital. Mm -hmm. They might only have you know, a handful of people. Um, and it's highly technical. Right. So that's slowing down the velocity of investing that's happening, but not significantly. Okay. Um, we are seeing minor discounts, about 25% discounts in the valuation of early stage projects. But again, not significant compared to what we're seeing in listed assets, either in big tech or in crypto. Okay. So this doesn't necessarily seem to be an every four-year pattern. Is there any way to know four years from now that we're going to be back here having the same conversation or not? I wish. I mean, uh, that, that would be the multi-trillion dollar yes. question, right? I mean, I think um, what we do know uh, in crypto is that there's this huge brain trust um, coming into the space. Um, beyond kind of the initial kind of core native, we're seeing a lot of brilliant talent now coming out of Web 2 because, of course, their stock options don't look so good. They might right. have been made redundant. So we're seeing a lot of talent come in both as founders or early employees, like founder employees. Um, and with crypto, one thing's for sure, because it's this permissionless, open financial system, there's an incentive to find new ways to create economic value. Right. Um, and if you can do that, um, the kind of feedback loop to kind of capital rewarding it is... Um, incredibly short, so you compare it to classic equity investing, um, you might have to wait 10 years before your investment um, has a public listing, but if at all, you know, right. majority will fail, 90% will fail first two years. Mm. In crypto and Web3, we see projects often go public, have a listed digital asset. Um, in the good times, it could be as, as short as six to 12 months. Um, so that's starting to get pushed back a little bit now. We have a, a launch pad proposition in our accelerator, which helps um, effectively launch those projects. Um, and we're seeing typically projects go on hold for about six to 12 months, waiting to see how the market shakes out. Mm. Um, what we have seen in the kind of wider uh, secondary market is as the macro environments put a lot of stress on the system, mm -hmm. a lot of it's kind of key innovations such as um, stable coins, uh, and there's something called Terra, which is an algorithmic stable coin, mm. highly innovative form of uh, stable coin, as well as lots of leverage in DeFi. A lot of that's been put under stress, either mm. collapsed, and we're starting to see this unwinding of leverage in the system, which is why um, those listed assets are down 90%. Right. Um, so the kind of question is, you know, where does the secondary market money come from? And, and that's going to be some macro factors. It's going to be some factors specific to crypto. But again, a lot of that $15 billion that I mentioned earlier yes. that has to be allocated into the space, some of it is very early stage, but some of it is hybrid, i.e. Okay. they can have an active strategy as well. Right. So there's money there. Um, it's just waiting for this bit of a clear out. I think the general sentiment within our investor network is six to 12 months, and we should begin to see a recovery. Okay. But again, some innovation trigger comes along, and that will just change the story completely overnight. Absolutely. It's fluid. Exactly. Jamie Burke, Outliers Ventures, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure to hear your insights. Thanks for having me on. Have a good day.